G'day everybody, uh, Wong here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the SCAR H. This video is going to begin with looking at the stats, then I will be comparing it to other guns of the same class, and then I'll be talking about the exact attachments I would bring, and then um, I will briefly go over playstyle, but honestly all throughout those I'll probably already be talking about its playstyle differences from other guns, and then I will be doing a live commentary. Stick around for the live commentary, it was, a, it was a pretty fun match. So this gun has 42 damage, which is slightly higher than the AK-15, only making it only making it 3 shot people with normal armor, um, whereas the AK-15 would take 4 shots against the armor labeled normal, um, which would give you 25 extra health. Um, yeah, this gun will still 3 shot to the chest against those. It has the same exact recoil stats as the AK-15, but the fire rate is a little bit lower. So this gun does kill slower than the AK-15, which might turn some people off right away. But as I mentioned in the last video, a lower fire rate actually equals a better recoil. And I find that this gun, I can definitely use at further ranges than the AK-15, purely because the recoil is a bit easy to control, and also because I only need a three-shot body shot. So this gun actually is, it's almost like if I got the AK-15 and I extended its range a little bit further, but lowered its damage a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. It does not have the exact same properties as the AK-15. Like up close, you will not kill nearly as fast. But yeah, anyways, um, at range, it does a bit better. And as you'll see in the live commentary, I actually get a few range kills even with a red dot. Nothing else really to talk about here. It's reload speed's a bit slow, but it's fine. Four, four seconds is like, in this game, four seconds isn't that bad because a lot of the guns are slow in this game but yeah honestly those are the stats for this gun and a quick side note please leave a comment if you'd like me to talk more about particular stats if you guys have any questions about the stats throw them down in the comments um and yeah leave a comment if you'd like me to talk about more in the stats section because i don't know if i've covered everything you guys want to hear you know i'm quickly gonna do this will be super fast a where does it sit um, kind of thing like compared to the other guns with similar damage models so the guns with similar damage models are the AK-15, SCAR-H, the FAL and the AK-5C. None of the other guns really fall into that three shot kill kind of category on the regs so these are the guns I'll be comparing it to. Right now the SCAR-H sadly I actually feel like personal use is the lowest out of these four, the gun I'll probably use not as much. I really like the AK-15 um, just because it's competitive time to kill even up close. The SCAR-H kind of falls short a little bit, that 500 fire rate or was it 40 fire rate actually kind of like matters, you know, like I use the AK-15, I feel like I kill really quick, but on um, the SCAR-H, I don't know, maybe it's just like a mental thing, but these two guns, however, I um, just want to quickly mention these completely shred these two at a lot of things. Now that does not mean do not use the SCAR-H and the AK-15. I, I personally believe that um, you should use any gun you want, just have a bit of fun, you know what I mean? But if you were dropped into a pro league match and you wanted to have the best gun, like you, you would use one of these um, as opposed to the other two. But this video is about the SCAR-H, onwards with the SCAR-H. The attachments I would run, uh, if you're looking to use a red dot and you like full autoing and you don't really like doing tap fire, I would use the SE5 grip and the compensator, just like the AK-15. I personally believe that there's not much else the other attachments could give you. You really want that balance of vertical and horizontal. Um, I'm more inclined to use the BCM on this gun, in fact, because the slower fire rate means vertical doesn't matter as much. Um, for me, at least, that's what I normally find. But um, the SE5 is good, and the URK for close range maps is good because it makes your reload speed way faster, and that's always good when you're on close range. Um, you might even just slap on the quick mag as well if you're doing a close range map. But if you're looking for something a bit balanced um like a balanced mix jack of all trades sort of deal i would these are the attachments i would run but there is another type of build you can do on the sky h however and that is if you run the vertical grip not the stable um the vertical grip and then if you run the tactical barrel and then you run a long range scope the reason i recommend this um any scope really it's your choice i personally would run i would run the m125 of the acog and a canted or top sight um top sight for better like overall visibility but the canted site for some reason I just really I really like it so I normally run that but you could do this these sorts of attachments and you end up getting a playstyle that's like more of a long range tapping sort of playstyle like a DMR almost but with that also has full auto capabilities up close um, the reason why you run the vertical over the stable is right now um, the first shot kick right if I times 0.91 by 1.38 that'll equal my first shot vertical recoil 
if I chuck on the vertical grip and I times 1.14 by 1.05, I end up actually having lower recoil on my first shot with the vertical grip. So the stable grip doesn't really matter as much. It'll lower my horizontal for the first shot, but I think a lot of people know that if you're trying to do slow tap fires, you're looking to lower the vertical, not the horizontal as much. So I would use the vertical grip. Um, and yeah, this gun, the reason this shines more than the AK-15 at long range with tapping is because that extra two damage means that three shot body shot is more consistent, um, which is just what you want for a DMR. I actually might not do a playstyle section and I might just do it right here because I feel like it's uh, gonna mesh really well. So the playstyle for this gun is honestly very similar to the AK-15, but you wanna be edging towards range a little bit more. You wanna get more range engagements and less close range. I generally find that this leads to a slower playstyle. In the commentary, I die a lot because I'm up close and I've got bad situational awareness, so I start playing slower. And the Scar H, if you're the kind of player who's dying a lot up close and you need to get into the habit of playing slower, Scar H will be really good because like that slow, medium range playstyle works really well and you can definitely do it at a full auto pace because of the low fire rate. Um, so yeah, I'd be trying to stick to medium range, stick to having a piece of cover, which is good for every gun really, but you don't really want to be running around and using this gun to get out of bad situations the ak-15 is much better at that you definitely want to be sticking to your range with this gun at uh not close but not too long definitely shoots a bit further than the ak-15 sorry i'm uh, kind of repeating myself a bit here but um yeah honestly i think i've talked enough about the play style and i think that um you guys should watch this live commentary all right this is going to be a live commentary again just like last time and i'm going to be running the scar hey this will be my first time using it this prestige but I do have a thousand kills with it over the course of two other prestiges so I'll be starting with iron sights and that's totally fine couple things real quick always try to be in a vehicle at the start never go on foot I know it's obvious but it's like imagine there's a line drawn in the middle of the map this is where both teams will meet if you're in a vehicle you'll get to that line faster or even over the line which is definitely where you want to be and uh, also because I'm running iron sights because my first time using it I generally think that Getting kills with the irons in this game is like the hardest thing you can do with the weapon, the first five kills. So we'll try to take it a bit slow and try to get a confirmed five like 1v1s instead of trying to get like a multi-kill because I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like if I try really hard I might be able to get those five kills. We will see. See, this is the problem though. You do get three points, but we don't get the advantage of being in the middle of the map. Three points is nice. Two guys down there on the quad. I'm gonna leave them. I'm gonna hop on the rope in a sec to get down onto D. Nope, he's just taking us the other way. He doesn't have guns on this thing, but he I think he thinks he does, or something. Ah, uh, yeah, I could kill that guy. Yeah, this is honestly not where I wanted to be at all. Um, I'm trying to find out where that sniper is. Is that near the bus? Let me figure out where the sniper is. There he is, I saw him on my screen. Now he's behind cover, that's actually good because I think he won't repeat for a while. And, oh, that was a good shot. That was really good shooting. Ah, oh, cookies and cream, yeah. that's good. Yeah, you got me. Fucking dog shit. <laughs> oh, wow. Bro, walk into my fucking scope next time. Stop fucking. Okay. That's pretty crazy. It was one of those situations where he got me without doing an info swing, and that's what surprised me there. If I if he did an info swing, I definitely could have reacted, but as you guys saw, when he swung the right, he got a really nice shot on me. Um, even though he's being mean, I can still look at that objectively, and he hit like a crazy good shot. I think that... Um, Look, I feel like players like that, when they say like, oh, you're a shitter, and get all mad and stuff. Or well, not mad, but they get all like that. It kind of is like... I don't know, it's like, I don't really react like that when I hit those shots, because I know that that's just kind of the way the game works. So I know that's like, what's going to happen. I want to go back and kill this guy just to like, prove a point, but I've actually got a feeling he'll kill me a couple times, because he's pretty good. Another thing is that was weird about that engagement, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when he swung me and killed me, um, or hit the first shot on me, he didn't appear on my screen very much, it was like very, very sudden and quick. And that's actually because, um, not only was he peeking me, giving him peeker's advantage, but I was also walking the wrong direction, like the opposite direction of a peek. That actually increases peeker's advantage by like a lot. I actually think that it was just like that, that advantage that he got was like a pure 50-50, especially without an info swing. It was pretty random. Dang, I'm so bad. 
I definitely should have gotten that kill because I had the advantages, but I missed my shots. I unlocked the reflex, I don't even remember getting the 5 kills. Oh, I must have gotten a assist counter's kill or something. I don't know. Maybe I just am remembering bad. Ooh, that's bad, I don't want to be there. Make a pixel on here. Oh, quick, get him boys, quick! Oh, get him. I heard him say, make them think someone's here. I'm gonna throw an impact grenade to get the damage advantage. Ah, he died, I heard his helmet clink. I got lucky that guy who was close didn't kill me. But, um, it is what it is. Take it slow up these stairs because our mines actually blend in with the stairs really well because they fall into the steps. And it is post commentary here. See these shots I take on these snipers and I miss a few and don't end up getting a kill and I go around this corner right away. The reason I go around the corner right away is just to throw off their pre-aim so they don't know where I am. Ah, uh, I feel bad. I probably should have committed to that res. I saw a sniper glint aim at me for a sec just through here. Uh, that was bad. I probably shouldn't have gone for the shots even. I probably just should have um, backed up and chilled a bit. That second guy I just killed, that was literally just pure luck. I was just scanning for more people and he happened to be right where my aim was. That's why it's actually good to have your aim sort of where people could be. Just because right there, I didn't actually know he was there. But because I pre-aimed well... Um, didn't really matter that I didn't know. I got no- oh, I do have a grenade left. I thought I had no grenades, I was reading the other thing. I have an ammo pack equipped as well, um, which is nice for getting all that back. And also gives you two bandages, these small ones. Oh, let's have a look. I really want to kill that guy who's um, talking smack, just because, you know, <laughs> feels good to, to do that. I'm going to use a bandage on this medic, even though I only have a couple. Ooh, that guy is damaged. I'm gonna wait for him to unprone or hit him once. That's a teammate mine, I think. I only have one bandage left. All right, let's send it for the boys. I'll revive Neo. Why not? Oh, he, he gave up. I got you left from. Alright, well, because we've gotten that bug this match, I'll call it an ammo drop. Huge tip, call it in far away from yourself. Stand back, and now you'll be able to look up to shoot the parachute right away. The minion will come down hella fast. I'm actually only going to shoot the chute twice, because when it hits the ground, it won't bounce, because the parachute's not broken. I normally would just break the parachute to make it fall faster, though. I can't res him, so I don't have bandages, so I'm not going to. Right now, this match is... Uh, you know what, I may as well do that 1 HP just because, um, bandages. Look, some guns literally, um, so stupid, I was thinking instead of, I was thinking about what I was saying instead of the game, but, um, what do you call it? Some guns only do need one extra bit of damage to be one shot less to kill, so I may as well heal that extra bit of HP. Alright, I'm gonna head back to D. Um, I would go to C. But I, this is kind of cringy, I want to let them have it so I can go back and take it for more XP and kills and stuff. Um, and I think that I'll be able to help the boys take D. I actually don't like being in this position. I don't know exactly why, but I've just died there a lot, so I'm going to move. I'm um, like in that weird valley down there, I die all the time down there. Is that a teammate? No, it's an enemy. I honestly thought like I was a teammate in the building for a sec. Oh, I'm dead because I didn't uh, have any situational awareness. I probably shouldn't hop the fences as much as I do. Alright, now that they've got C... If I touch it, now that it's red, we get the points, um, when we finally do capture it, we'll get points, because it went red. If I walk off of it, oh, my aim just went bad, because I suck. What I was going to try and do there was walk off and ping it, but to ping it as like a squad order, but I didn't do that because I died. I'm going to get on top of this building. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, man. Look at that, a couple, couple deaths in a row. See, right there, that was just a case of, um, I just didn't think there'd be a guy on our side of the objective. Um, I had no reason to think that though, because we actually didn't have any teammates nearby, so I don't know why I thought that. I just did, probably due to muscle memory running around. 
Oh, that's lucky that that guy's rezzing. Um, just, just a quick little look before I heal. Thank you very much. Unlock the org, hell yeah. Roof on roof. Okay, he sees me taking there. We're not getting many kills here. Um, I don't like going to E and F or A and B, but I would rather go to B and A right now. Don't actually know why I'd rather go there. I just, I don't know. I don't even know why I'd rather go there. I feel like it's more predictable where the enemies are because they can't dip into their spawn because this is our side of the map. But, I don't know. Oh, flashbang, that's tough. I think I'm dead here. Flashbanged again, I should have looked down instead of looking up. Big tip there, when you're flashbanged like that, look down and so the next one won't get you if they do another. But I didn't do that because that was silly. Let's go to this location. Didn't get a hit marker, so I don't think he's behind that car. Means he's dead. That was semi-lucky. I, I think that guy was just doing a noise there, because I think he also felt that. That was a teammate. Man. Oh, let me have a look here. I think I have something turned on that I don't want. This... I'm noticing that I was finding it hard to distinguish enemies from teammates, and I think it was because of that setting, but we'll find out if it needs a restart before taking effect. I think it does. Um, alrighty, let's have a look here. Oh no, that's a shame. Honestly, I'm just in a little bit too deep here. I need to slow down my gameplay. Whenever you're having a situation like this, I just all the time where I have like a few deaths without sort of doing anything good in a row means you've got to take it a bit slower, generally, because you're trying to, when you get mad and stuff, you try to like, make up for what you've lost, and I feel like I've lost out on kills here, and that means I'll play a bit faster, but I shouldn't do that, I should play a bit slower to try and counteract that. So I'm going to chillax and take a bit more cover even when I think I'm safe, so I'm going to go through this building instead of running down the street, because my intuition has been wrong this match. We'll see what we can do. Take it a bit slower, even though I know I'm losing out on kills per minute here, it's just, I don't want to keep dying. Honestly, that guy should have lived, but he didn't do the jump around thing and go to cover. He decided to run in a straight line, which is not even bad from him, he just doesn't know. But right there, that was well out of my gun's range. I only really got that kill because that guy played bad, not because I played good. I'll start heading into D now. I'm playing a bit slower as you can see just because I died so much that I want to regain some kills. Ooh. Lucky that guy was one hit, but I think either way I might have been able to kill him. I thought that was a dude, it isn't. It's just some flowers. This guy with a grozer here somewhere. I don't know if he's dead. Oh, he's dead. I don't want to res the teammate because I think if I jump off the roof and everything, it's going to be bad, so I won't do that. See, this guy's doing the proning through the wall thing, he doesn't realize. Actually, it doesn't really matter. Alrighty. I'm going to head back to C because I don't like going to the outer objectives. Um, going to the outer objectives just takes a long time to come back once I'm done. Heard that guy's footsteps. Lucky that guy wasn't looking at me, I think he was focused on other people. I stopped sprinting there just for a sec. Um, I don't know if you noticed right here, I like stopped sprinting because I didn't want that guy to hear me in turn. But uh, he got killed by someone else anyways. That medic's dead. I'm gonna go for the res. That guy's resing. I'm just gonna go over here and look. Oh, let's have a gaze. Lucky that guy chose to prone. Him proning meant that his legs were visible to me. Um, this guy's an enemy I saw here. He's dead. Try to get out of this valley kind of as quickly as possible. I don't like being in it. I just feel like the foliage makes my gunfights feel like random and not skill based. C's being taken, so we go back to D. 
I couldn't have made it to the objective, so I wouldn't try. Editor's post commentary here. I think that is a good thing. If you're running towards an objective and it's going to be captured before you make it there, that's a really good time to check the map and that'll let you know your next move. I saw a guy coming out wide here. I'm going to choose to get cover because I think he knows I'm here. He doesn't. There's that guy. Let's see if there's an ammo pack here. I swear there was one. Oof, that's a shame. Cool, 34 and 10's alright. I definitely could be doing better, but I was dying a lot because I'm not playing that good. Alright, let's. My aim's been bad and my situational awareness has been bad. This map, honestly, is a bit like that because of the whole buildings thing. There could be an enemy far deep in our line, so it's really hard to predict a lot of things on this map. Same with like Frugus. Frugus sort of has the same issue, but Frugus I have better intuition with because I think I've played it for longer, so that's why. Um, I stood far back there so the guy would fall into my crosshair. I'm not going to kill this medic. Uh, I don't know, I will. Well, I should have killed him earlier. I thought that that guy was going to walk up the stairs on me, so I didn't want to kill the medic, but then uh, he didn't walk up as quickly as I thought. Honestly, that could have been two kills and it, it became zero. Uh, I was... A little ambitious there, I think. Is that guy. I'm gonna go to D to get some XP. And then head back to C and do a pincer move on all those enemies. Touching it before red is good. See, I just got 1,400 just for neutralizing in a squad objective. So even just making it go from red to blue can be really good. I can see a white, like, outline of this dude. Do you guys see that? There's, like, a whiteness. He can see me, too, because in smokes, if you're in them, it's easy to see out. Ooh, uh, interesting. That was a weird situation. I could sort of see, like, a thin white outline. I think on YouTube, um, YouTube makes everything brighter. I think you will not be able to see that. It might just all look white. Oh man. See, right here, honestly, I've just kind of gotten lucky that the enemies we we'll turn around. When I said earlier I want to go back to C after I hit D for the pincer, this is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. And it's happening pretty well. Alright, this is tough. Wow, I thought that guy would pre-aim the other thing. I ran to the left for a second and ran back to the right to try and make him catch me, but he actually held the same angle. More post-commentary here. That guy I just killed. The well, green well, guy. well. That's the guy who killed me at the start of the game and he talked a bunch of crap. So I'm pretty happy I got him. As <laughs> the guy, well, that was difficult. Yeah, I mean, you know, your your kill was also a fifty percent chance of not being a kill, considering he didn't info swing. Not considering he didn't info swing on the rock, that is pretty much an example of that guy's rolling the dice. Because the, here, here's the thing: if I chose to go towards the right when he swung, he would have died because I would have had peekers on him. But he chose, like I happened to choose to go to the left, so his kill was a fifty percent chance at the start of the game. But, um, what do you call it? If he did an info swing, he'd get a 100% chance, but he did an info swing, and that caught me off guard. Because generally when they info swing, I play a little bit different to try and throw off what their read was. But I couldn't do it, because he didn't info swing. Alright, the only reason I'm choosing to reload to tiny mags there instead of grab extra ammo is purely because I saw targets, and I just really wanted to get the shots out quickly. Because as soon as I saw those roof guys died, I want to replenish my ammo. See, I couldn't tell because I've got the brightness and contrast thing, which definitely takes a restart because everything is really bright for me. Good for YouTube though, it means you guys will be able to see everything, which would be good. I'm sending here for points. Oh, I don't know, I'm gonna get out of here. 
I'm gonna go back to D again. This is really good, uh, like good map flow for me, just because it means I can just go backwards and forwards and kind of have a reliable set of kills. I swear there's an enemy there. I'm gonna do the less dangerous thing and get to cover first. I could have just ran up the road, but um, I was afraid of dying because I didn't actually know if um, I was fully clear, so I chose instead to turn around and get to these blocks for cover. Which happened to also pay off with that guy. I'm lucky I killed him. I think I, sh I thought I would get him to one tap. I didn't think that would actually kill him. I don't know why. I just thought I'd miss a shot there, but I didn't. Right, that guy's going to res. I'll protect him. Same guy as earlier. That's a shame. Okay. I'm going to run to this wall to get cover. Right. I'm pretty lucky there. Alrighty, doing pretty good now. 57-11, definitely having a pretty alright game now. See, it helps to just slow down when you're having a bad game. Um, and just, literally just trust the process. Um, I don't really know if I've been giving any insights to this video. I, have, I don't feel like I've been giving any, but I might have. This valley I don't like to be in, but it does have good cover, so I'm going to stick to the center of it and not peek these enemies. Because I want to get around behind them. So now I'm going to go behind, and there's that guy. I think the guy dropped down with us. He's dead. Uh, I can't, don't think I can get that kill. If I had a long range scope, I might have gone for a headshot body shot. But I don't have one equipped. One thing this gun has over the AK-15 as well, that I'll quickly mention, is... um. This gun has a more consistent three shot body shot um, because against normal armor, like armor that's literally labeled normal, um, you will do a three shot. But with the AK 15, with the two less damage, it's a four shot. I'm gonna jump this mine instead of shooting it. Alright. Well, well, well. Cookies and cream. We meet again. Ah, he uh, gave up. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was an enemy. Cool. Um, C's been taken. See, this is just good. If we're in a situation where C was blue but getting taken, that'd be even better. Because that means if we were running back, we can get that pincer again. But C already being taken is pr still pretty good for us. So that means we can go and get some kills. I'm actually going to switch where I normally go. I'm going to go the other way just because... I've been getting a lot of gunfights over that side of the map, and I'm going to try and get some over here just to see if um, the enemies will predict that. I'm going to chuck down a spawn point here. That's pretty semi, that's like semi-random, honestly. I just saw that I could put one down. I think it's always better to have one than to not. Ah, that's tough. I can see the tip of that guy's head. Um, so I wouldn't be able to get that kill very easily. Nice, got here right as it turned to blue. D is still ours, which is interesting. Um, I reckon there's dudes in between here and B, and I don't think there's as many in between here and E. The reason I think there's more between here and B is because there's no teammates in that area. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, do this to climb on top of stuff, really good tip. Every class builds the concrete barrier instantly, um, which is a good tip. Another guy here, I'm pretty sure. No, no more. I think I'm gonna die if there is. I hear a guy on footsteps. Very close. I'm gonna do this. It's not predictable. Right there, I would. Um, that's when you hear enemies say, like, why were you there? Like, he didn't do it, but a lot of people would say that in that situation because it's pretty random. I'd only be there if I knew where he was, and I knew where he was because of the footsteps. Oof, that was lucky. This gun, honestly, I swear, I'll have to double check the stats, um, so, quote me if I'm, don't quote me here, but I swear this gun has a slower fire rate than the AK-15, and that actually makes it a lot more, like, you can hit shots a lot more consistently at range, kind of like the AUG, um, thrives because of that. Might not, though, this could have a fast fire rate, and I'm talking at my butt, but I swear something lowers its recoil, and I don't actually think it's just the recoil stat. 
I swear I heard an AK-15, AK-5C even going off near here. Um, let's head to D because it's taken by the enemies. Do I still have my ammo? I've got two ammo kits, hell yeah. Hear footsteps here. Oof. Wait, there's another guy here? We're chilling. Wow, oh, there's another guy there, I didn't realize. Careful claim. Careful claim, that's a good shot. Um, you know what? I'm gonna use the ammo pack, because I got two. May as well. Let's head over to D. Always spot the objectives if you're squad leader. Um, huge tip. Um, actually I'll show it in a sec, but there's a huge tip for always getting squad leader. I'm sure you guys probably already know it, but... If you press home on your keyboard, create a party, and then lock the party. And now you have a party that you, you pretty much... People in parties always get squad leader. Um... If there's enough people to, um, like, do that. And yeah, so I always get squad leader pretty much. Uh, because I was a bit slow there, I didn't get to touch D, but it's all G. I'm gonna kill this guy and then check the objectives and see what the enemies have. I don't know where he's gone, so I don't want to pursue quickly. Uh, was that him? He must have died. C is being taken, that's good, that's good. I think it's actually getting taken from B, not from D, so I don't think a pincer will work, but we'll see. Go back in this direction again, just purely because it's the fastest, because I was already here. Also, I think there was a bit of downtime. I'd like to talk about that guy at the start of the game, who's like being all rude. Look, I am a firm believer that toxicity, I'm like anti-toxicity, even if you're playing better than someone, I'm really anti-toxicity because I've played a lot of games, and trust me when I say this, when I was bad at games, I could kill players who are way better than me even now, purely because that's just how, that's just the nature of games. Um, everything is a risk, because you don't actually know for sure what the enemy is going to do. Um, everything really is a risk, and it's all about reducing the risk. So like right there... I thought that guy would make the good play. Oh, 77-13. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think there's a few situations where I could have done better. But that was a good match. Um, but really quickly, I'm going to keep talking about the other thing. Um, that guy, right? He should have info swung me to get... Um, like, he should have info swung me. But here's the thing. He didn't and he won. So really, he made the good choice. But it was a 50% chance. If he went to the left, um, as we saw there, his left, um, he'd get the kill. If he went to the right, he would have died. Because if he went to the right... I would have peekers on him, he went to the left, he happened to have peekers on me, and also I was moving the opposite direction, which ups it by a lot. So he took a 50% chance and it won. Against a really good player, that might actually be the play, because if you do an info swing, I could have, I actually have more options, because I could impact grenade where he came from and things like that, but um, he didn't do that. He chose to random swing me and he got the kill. I don't think that that's... Um, you know, I don't think I don't think that means anything about either of us. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm just going to do this little outro bit in the editor. I really, really enjoy doing the live commentary now after the first one, and I hope you guys like that jazz music I put over it. I think it's I think it's nice and like chill. And um, with my transitions, I switch the noise to like a crackling fire because I think that I think that ups the chillness, you know. And I think that it'd be cool to get some videos that are super chill. And uh, yeah, and also. I, uh, yeah, I just want to say that was a really, really good match. I had tons of fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching.